what is up guys it is phantom here and welcome back to a brand new video guys so in this video i'm going to be bringing you guys my list of the top five best characters in wizard 101 guys so really what mainly constitutes a good character for me is their storyline you know like the storyline behind them what they do in the story how they influence it you know what the effects of the stuff that they do on the story is and everything like that and yeah, really, that is kind of what constitutes a good character for me. Like, I don't really care as much about, like, the appearance of the character or how I feel about them first glance. Really, when, when you're questing through the game, I feel like a good character, like, takes their toll on you in a sense that they kind of, like, grow on you over time and everything. So, I don't know. These are the characters that at least met my expectations of what a good, good character should be. So, I don't know. Obviously, we're all going to have different opinions. So, let me know in the comments down below what your top five or top ten or however many, you know, characters that you like in this game. Just let me know your favorites, guys. I'd really like to hear your thoughts. But without further ado, guys, let's get into number five. Coming in at number five, guys, we have Ozzy, a.k.a. Ozymandias. King of Kings, guys, aside from being honestly a really, really awesome looking character, he has had a pretty awesome character arc in his own right, okay? I can't get too close to the uh, to the battle circle there, or else the dialogue will start, and then Ozzy will disappear, and blah, blah, blah. I've tried it all before. Weird things happen with the cutscene and everything. But guys, coming in at number five, we have Ozzy. And honestly, the main thing that really appeals to me about him is, you know, he's kind of, well, aside from just being a floating head, which is just awesome in its own right, he is... He actually has a pretty interesting character arc to him. So, basically, kind of the storyline behind him was he was a, like, lost king of Mirage or something like that. And we go, I think it's into a tomb or something. We go into a certain tomb and kind of rescue his skull. It was, like, laying on a shelf or something. It was actually kind of hilarious. But, basically, he goes from being kind of a nothing, like a forgotten king with no real significance whatsoever, to eventually, you know, we get that gem for him. He becomes, like... A bit more sentient and eventually he comes into this obviously we get to the north gate here and he teams up with us because we obviously rescue him we build a lasting alliance with him and everything it's cool and everything and then he finally gets to take revenge on his number one enemy who stole his crown and defiled his legacy which is the scorpion here aka old cop's son aka overlord Zer xerxes <laughs> aka the person who's attacking barrage and blah 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 doomsday everything like that but really it's kind of a satisfying conclusion for him like you know he gets to have his revenge on his number one enemy as well as become i don't know ha have life again like I, I don't really know how to say it exactly but you know we kind of just rescue him and we help you know bring him up from nothing and then you know he eventually becomes something so i think that character arc was really cool uh I, I wish, you know, we'd kind of get to see what he would look like before becoming a skeleton and being left in that tomb for all those years. But, you know, it's cool what we got to do with him and everything, and I think he's a really, really awesome character with a really, really nice and satisfying character arc, guys. So, anyways, that's all I got to say about King Ozzy. I love you, honestly. I'm so glad, you know, we got to defeat Scorpion with you. Oh god, the dialogue's starting. Let's, let's move on to number four, guys. Coming up next, guys, on the list, we have... Divim Whiteheart. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, guys. This guy, man, this guy is truly an awesome character for how simple of a character he actually is. So, I recently quested through Chrysalis on my death, and honestly, it was kind of a struggle, but this guy, man, this guy made it all worth it. You know, he actually has a really, really brilliant character arc. Basically, what happens with him is we come to Chrysalis, and we obviously talk to Zoltan and everything, and blah blah blah, she pretends to not like us, even though, you know, we know deep down she does, but, <laughs> you know, we know deep down she's a good guy, but that's, okay, enough about Z Zoltana, we got Divim here, okay, so this guy, we rescue him, at the start of Chrysalis, we get him some armor from the mausoleum, blah blah blah, he thanks us for that, our alliance gets stronger as we go on, and then we eventually help him to free Bastion, and, you know, like, help save the burrowers from like utter destruction basically because you know morgans like bugs and everything were hunting them so we save his people and in return he helps us kind of get to morganth and everything so obviously you know aside from being a huge help with us he actually had one of the more interesting character arcs in this game you know he kind of goes from uh, sort of similar to ozzy's storyline kind of he kind of goes from like nothing and having nothing and being like a prisoner of war to you know, becoming, like, in alliance with us, which is, you know, obviously one of the best choices he's ever made, but <laughs> basically he builds a very, you know, lasting alliance and friendship. Oh, that zoom is, uh, yeah, that zoom is very fl flattering. Uh, <laughs> ha! 
So his relationship with us is similar similar to Ozzy's in the fact that, you know, we do build a pretty strong connection as well as we aid each other, you know, for our own goals, which I guess kind of coexist with each other. But what's really interesting is there's a certain cutscene with Devim where he almost fucking dies. Like, it, there's like this amazing cutscene like in the tower, I think in Moon Cliffs or something, where he goes to like grab something from like the top of a tower that we just defeated a boss in. I don't remember the specifics exactly, but he goes in and the brood mother like swoops through the window or like swoops in from from somewhere. I don't even fucking remember, but he swoops in and like just pincers this guy and just throws him out the window. It's just kind of the most like I don't know, man. It's like kind of gruesome, honestly, and it made me really feel bad for him. And when a character can actually make you like feel okay i can't deal with these zooms anymore but you know when a character actually makes you like feel for them and everything you can tell like they definitely just had a profound impact not only on you but the game itself because you know obviously they're relating to the game and everything devim you sir have a brilliant character arc seriously your character arc it's so good it's so good for one of the more like simpler npcs that we meet with honestly i really love the like whole alliance aspect of wiz but he was definitely the best, in my opinion, of, like, our little alliance NPCs that come with us and everything. So, Devim, that's gonna be all from you. Dude, honestly, you're fucking awesome. I, I can't wait to see you again in Chrysalis. I can't believe I'm saying that, but, you know, once I get to Chrysalis, probably on my storm, I'm guessing, is when I'll see him again. Devim, I can't wait. I'm glad, you know, I quested with you on this character and on my death. You are an awesome character. Anyways, guys, let's move on to number three. Coming up next, guys, we have... Grandmother Raven, and I just gotta say, what a character, guys. What a character arc we have here. You know, her character arc, I mean, it's so vast that it literally spans up until, like, up until this moment here, all the way from the Spiral's creation, you know? That's kind of how fucking old she is. She's been here from the very beginning, you know? She's seen some shit, for real. And her character arc is really interesting because she had not only a really interesting dynamic with Spider that obviously got resolved in the end if you've quested through Empyrean and everything, that was very, very interesting. Her relationship with Malori, I really, really like that as well. But the main thing that I thought was really, really interesting that they decided to do with her in the fourth, or not the fourth arc, the third arc, is that they kind of low-key, like, painted her as the villain a little bit. Like, you know, because the thing is... The, the whole conflict of Imperia was kind of weird and a little bit convoluted because each side kind of thought they were right, even though both sides were kind of right and wrong in their own right, you know, if, if that makes sense. If you question through Imperia, you probably know what I mean, but even though her character arc is very convoluted, you know, it kind of, I, I kind of like how they give a little bit of humanity to like this omnipresent being and everything like this god and everything you know humanizes the big raven god a little bit you know like obviously you know her relationship with spider that spanned a really long time i just really like how they connected kind of her storyline she they like kind of intertwined her storyline with ours a little bit by uh you know having the connection with malori and everything i thought that was just super interesting they did a lot of just really good things with this character, honestly. They just did a lot of really, really good things. And I really like this character. I really like how she was painted out to be sort of a villain, you know, in Imperia Part 2. Because obviously you had that cutscene, I believe, from Imperia Part 1. Where she's like with Malori talking to her in her little, like, bubble and everything. And she's like, you, you don't belong here. And then, like, I don't know. Kind of treats us inferior. I like that. I think that's, I think that's really, really cool. My mouse was just glitching out there. But Grandmother Raven, honestly, really, really interesting character arc. The fact that... It has just spanned for so long, I don't know, and that it can still feel this fresh, you know, just like a long storyline such as hers. I don't know, it's just really, really cool to me. Anyways, Grandmother Raven, I mean, you're a god. You're a god. I, a god with really, really nice qualities and a really good character arc, that is. But anyways, without further ado, guys, let's move on to number two. Coming in at number two, guys, is gonna have to be Morgan. Oh my god, what a great character, honestly. Guys, I understand that she wasn't on my top five best villains list you know and the reason for that honestly to me at least she's always just been more of a like character if that makes sense like she she's kind of a tragedy you know like she's a tragedy of a child who was raised a bit you know a, a little bit weird you know had a lot of potential eventually you know probably became pretty narcissistic and everything really really good storyline though because of how much detail was added onto it throughout the story like her story was like it was continued from like avalon all the way until okay the music's killing me <laughs> her story was continued from avalon all the way up until like right now in chrysalis part two in this little final dungeon we have here her storyline god we just 
I don't know, like, they did a really good job, like, filling in the blanks, I guess, so to speak, you know, we kind of learned about young Morganth, well, okay, obviously we got our first look at Morganth in Celestia for just, like, a brief moment, you know, we kind of just find out, found out kind of who she was, not quite her motivation and everything, but eventually we learned more through Zafaria and then Azteca, or, sorry, Avalon, I forgot Avalon completely, but we learned about more about her through Zafaria, Avalon, then Azteca, and then, of course, Chrysalis, you know, we learned more about her plans and kind of who she was as a person and how evil she really was, you know, and then in Chrysalis, though, in Chrysalis Part 2 specifically, they do something really, really interesting. In, I believe it is Radiance Reborn, you go to, you, you go to a certain area, right, where you can access Morgant's dreams slash visions of the past, like stuff that actually happened, you know? Not like Ghost Avalon where it was like semi-real but semi-not. Like this was from visions, we, we learned about visions that actually happened and her memories and everything. And that's like the first time I think we've ever accessed like a villain's memories, at least I think. I, I might be wrong about that, but we just, I don't know guys, there's just so much like meat to her story and everything. And that, that dream, like that dream quest line, was just one of my favorites in the entire game. You know, we learned more about what happened to her in Ravenwood, how she was expelled, how she eventually joined up and allied with the spiders to eventually become the spider queen and, like, get her magic back and everything and kind of become, like, the evil, I don't know, sociopathic queen she is today, you know? We just learned a lot about her. Her storyline's really, really full. Definitely one of the fullest storylines in the entire game. And, like, yes, yeah, she's a villain, but... The kind of questline brings out a little bit more of an innocent side to her, you know, when you learn about her and her younger years and everything and how, you know, she was a rebellious child, but I feel like it just wasn't entirely her fault. I don't know, her upbringing was a bit weird and how she was treated because she was more powerful than probably all the other students. I don't know, the whole dynamic of her story is really, really interesting to me. And it's, I wouldn't say relatable, but definitely one of the most relatable villain stories, in my opinion, that we've ever had here. So, amazing character arc, Morganth, you've done... An amazing job, honestly, just being who you are, if that makes sense. Just, yeah, I don't, you got a great storyline. You really got a great storyline, guys. But anyways, there is one with a greater storyline, just in my opinion, obviously. It's all my opinion. Let me know your opinions, by the way. I know, I know I've already said that, but, you know, I love reading your comments and everything. So, anyways, without further ado, guys, with that being said, let's move on to number one. Wow, wow, Fenton, have you really done Malister's Dungeon twice in the past week just for video's sake? Guys, j shut up, just shut up. Shut up. Okay, coming in at number one, guys, I mean, I don't think it's much of a surprise. A lot of you probably already knew this was going to happen regardless. Coming in at number one, guys, we have Malastare Drake, Malastare the Undying, uh, Shadow Malastare, whatever you want to call him. Literally, they're all the same dude because, I mean, this is all just one really, really large character arc. Definitely the largest character arc in the game, and I mean, did you expect the largest character arc in the game to be the best one? Some of you probably did, and you're correct, in my opinion at least. This guy, he's he's done a lot, uh, to, so to speak. Malister has done a lot with his time being in the game, being alive. I mean, god. Basically, Malister's big overarching character arc was split into three separate little arcs. Yeah, I know. This guy has been around for quite a while. Actually, 100 levels, in fact. So, the first 50 levels, you know, the first 50 levels that we achieve at least go hand in hand with his first character arc which is like the i'd like to call it the dragon spire arc which basically you know obviously it all leads up to dragon spire and him summoning the dragon titan because he wants to bring his wife sylvia back to life because she died from an illness obviously great storylines there uh, obviously humanizes the villain a lot which i obviously love i mean i think that contributes to both a really good character and a really good villain even though I think those are separate sections, which is why there's two videos on them. But okay, the first arc, we have the Dragon Spire arc. The second arc, we've got the Azteca arc, I guess you could say. I mean, he only comes back really for one world in Azteca, so I don't know. I would call that a separate arc, though, because he's in, like, kind of a different stage of his existence and everything. You know, that was, like, his first transformation into that, like, Aztecan dark-winged angel god and everything. And then you got the third arc, which is the Dark Moor arc, where he fully succumbs to the shadow, or at least we think, until we beat him and free him from his prison of, like, sadness, anger, and everything. Really good character arc. I mean, wh what can I say? He has so much. He has even more than Morganth, who already had a pretty decently large character arc. Obviously, he's a main villain, so he's gonna be treated, you know, to a good character arc, usually. I mean, it's just awesome. His character arc, it's amazing that he's managed to stay relevant for 100 levels, despite <laughs> us defeating him three separate times and everything, but... I don't know, guys. The arc never gets old for me. It's always just so entertaining, really, to see Malastare go at it and everything. 
and it's just my personal favorite character arc in the game. Obviously, you know, I'll probably have some people that'll argue like, oh, the grandfather spider arc was really good, or the Morganth arc was better than the Malister arc. That's fine, guys, but to me, Malister will always have the superior superior character arc, and really that obviously contributes to how good of a villain he is as well, because I, I did put him as number one on my villain list. Shh, shh, be quiet, don't tell anyone. But seriously, I mean, hands down, I have to give it to Malister, honestly. You know, it might sound repetitive, me just fawning over Malister every video, but truly the best villain, the best character in this game, best character arc, seriously. They just did a lot with him, and that's really why he's the best, guys. So, anyways, that's gonna be it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys did enjoy. You could leave a like down below if you did enjoy, guys. Road to 2K, or who knows, maybe we've already hit 2K subs once this video goes out. Guys, things have honestly been crazy lately. Thank you all for uh, all your support, honestly, that you've shown me. It really does mean the world, and I'm glad you guys can continue to enjoy these videos. So, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Make sure to post your opinions in the comments down below, guys. I'll see you guys later. Take care, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day, and peace out.